So, uh, Professor uh, Manish sir uh, is here. Actually, we I asked him for uh, some uh, details. Uh, he told that uh, myself I will introduce nothing to worry. But you know, uh, I have collected a few of uh, uh, whatever uh, sir uh, details. Uh, sir completed UG degree in civil engineering from uh, UEC and also worked for a duration of two years uh, after completed BPE. And later uh, he joined a PG course uh, in construction technology at BMS College of Engineering and received a gold medal, uh, first rank from my uh, MTech at BTU. And also uh, have been actively involved in teaching, research and consultancy from past 12 years. And also obtained PhD from uh, Visveshwarya Technological University and the guidance of uh, Professor Raghunath uh, as uh, Professor BMSC Bangalore in the year 2020. And his predominant works are the structural masonry, remedial engineering, and alternative building technologies, and BIM as the major interest areas of Professor Manish S. Direct. Presently, he is working as a faculty member at the Department of Civil Engineering, BMS College of Engineering, Bangalore. I welcome uh, to this uh, six days FDP program, sir. Please uh, stay together. Thank you. Thank you, Shri Keshwa, for uh, introducing me. So it's a pleasure for me to uh, speak here uh, in front of you all. So, and uh, uh, I'm very happy that uh, I'm back to Jyoti Institute of uh, Technology. Uh, not many of them know that uh, I was also faculty in the year uh, 2012 to 2013, here yes. when the, you know, the department uh, started. And from the year 2013, I think uh, I've known uh, uh, Keshav. So thank you for uh, introducing uh, me. So uh, uh, the topic which I'm going to uh, uh, present uh, in front of you all is on condition assessment of uh, structures, concrete structures in general. And uh, if time permits, okay, retrofitting and uh, rehabilitation methods, I will try to uh, cover. Okay, so yeah. So my uh, presentation, uh, you know, I have just uh, uh, bifurcated or split it into four parts. First part will be, you know, just give you a brief overview of background on why uh, condition evaluation or what, uh, why condition evaluation is important. Uh, we will try to understand some of the distress or uh, deterioration uh, mechanisms uh, which happen in uh, concrete. The second part uh, is uh, with respect to the actual topic that's on condition evaluation. So I'll also briefly touch upon uh, the uh, topic on NDP, uh, on respect to testing what we call it as. Part three is uh, related to you know uh, repair materials. So you know what are the uh, selection criteria which needs to be considered for uh, choosing a repair material and uh, or desirable properties in general. What are the different types of uh, you know, the repair materials we have uh, which are in practice? And uh, uh, yeah, I understand that uh, you know it's 15 now. Uh, so it's past 12, we are very uh, near uh, approaching to the lunch session. So I'll see if I can uh, you know, touch upon the uh, fourth topic, uh, retrofitting and uh, rehabilitation uh, methods. So yeah, so uh, let me just take up the part one. Okay, now who will, uh, uh, everybody knows that now our country is uh, witnessing Lot of uh, development, especially in the field of uh, construction and uh, infrastructure, right? So, lot of uh, uh, road works, that is highways, uh, ports, airports. You have residential and commercial buildings, urban and rural projects, uh, which are uh, you know uh, being taken up. So, you know, our uh, you know, Minister also has a goal you know, that you know housing for all schemes. So, you know. Uh, his, uh, his aim is to ensure that you know each and every family in our country has a house with them. So keeping this thing in mind, you know, there is a lot of uh, improvements or developments which are happening in the construction and infrastructure boom. 
So yeah, uh, just to sum it up, you know, you can see there Sagarmala uh, project. Okay, so here, right? So that's there. Uh, one thing what we need to understand uh, is, uh, you know, a lot of challenge for us to ensure that uh, these structure uh, remain safe. Okay, right? Uh, and uh, they are able to sustain their uh, you know, service life with minimal maintenance. With minimal maintenance and repair anything. You know, uh, you know uh, in India, you know, uh, some of the challenging projects have been taken up in the last uh, decade. So, any uh, okay. any idea which project is the one on the left top? So that's near Bandra Varli uh, ceiling in uh, Mumbai. So right, uh, and in the middle you have got uh, this one, any idea? Pamban Bridge in Rameshwaram, okay. right? Uh, the, also this is the old uh, line, uh, there is a new line which is being, uh, you know, being constructed. Okay. Any idea which is one that is this? Chenam Bridge in Kashmir, okay. which has which is been recently you know, constructed uh, by half months, half months is the company and Indian Railways is the client. Uh, okay. Any idea which, which project is this? It's a bogey bill bridge in Asa. Bogey bill bridge, uh, bridge in Asa. Okay. Uh, obviously, uh, I need not ask this one, right? This is, you know, the, you know, the bus now. Okay. So bullet train project, which is connecting the two uh, cities, Mumbai and and Ahmedabad. So in the near future, I'm sure, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, routes which are planned. Uh, incidentally, uh, you know, this tunnel first name, uh, you know, tallies with the uh, FDP theme also. So, I thought, why not let me include Atal Tunnel. Correct? Uh, okay. Let me just ask, uh, any idea who is this person? Modi. Modi. Yeah. He was there to you know, inaugurate this uh, uh, project. Okay? Uh, because I am asking again a wrong question. Which project is this? Statue of Unity. Okay, Statue of Unity in Gujarat. Okay, right. Any idea which project is this? It's Polavaram in Andhra Pradesh. Okay. So you know why I have uh, you know so why I have showed uh, this project is we need to understand that you know these projects are complex in nature. Don't you agree with this? They are quite complex in nature. So, second thing what you need to understand is, you know, the work conditions are very, very challenging. Rameshwaram, okay, right in the middle of your Indian Ocean, okay, right, weather conditions, right, uh, take example of the Chenab Bridge, Kashmir, okay, coldest uh, part of uh, India, okay. One more thing which we need to understand is uh, also, you know, most of the projects are uh, shooting the time deadline, but yes, we do have time constraint for these uh, projects, right? And in addition to time, we need to understand that they also have the budgetary constraints, correct? Maintaining them is a very big challenge. Maintaining them is a very big challenge. So, uh, since they are being constructed in uh, very challenging environments or in uh, harsh conditions, okay, the risk of deterioration is too high, okay? So, Bandra Valley ceiling, for example, if you take, it's, it's, you know, it's right in the middle of your, uh, see, coastal environment. So, the risk of deterioration or distress, okay, right, is always there. Monitoring is very much important. Monitoring the health of these structures is very much important, correct? So, uh, to sum it up, uh, you know, what we need to understand over here is durability, okay? Durability of these structures has to be, you know, intact so that they serve their service life for a longer duration. So, yeah, uh, just to give you an uh, example of, uh, you know, how things are uh, changing today, I have uh, data over here. So, uh, this was one of the survey which was uh, constructed, I mean, you know, uh, collected by IBMS, Indian Bridge Management uh, System, under uh, MORTH. So they have collected the information of uh, about roughly around 1.7 lakh uh, bridges. Okay, and uh, out of this, they have found that 6,000 odd bridges are in a uh, you know very bad state. I can say they are structurally 
so distress. One thing which we need to understand over here is the database itself is still they are trying to collect the information and the database is incomplete. Okay. Now, if this is for the bridges, just imagine with respect to the buildings, the number can be very, very huge. Okay. So, uh, I think I have told this. So, as a whole, you know, we as civil engineers, we have a uh, uh, big task or percolate task of uh, maintaining this uh, concrete infrastructure because uh, in India or in the Asian subcontinent, okay. Uh, reinforced concrete is a very popular uh, building uh, material for whether it is for buildings or for bridges or or dams. Okay, so uh, we have a Herculean task of maintaining this concrete infrastructure and building new ones with durability and corrosion resistance. Okay, so uh, shortly you will understand that uh, uh, you know corrosion is one of the very big or uh, you know the problem which uh, these uh, you know uh, structures uh, face because of which the deterioration uh, happens we will try to understand on that aspect now uh, if you see uh, the uh, reason behind why the concrete uh, repairs fail okay is about 16% of the uh, reason says that incorrect diagnosis of the cause of the damage or deterioration of the structure. So please understand that uh, you know rather than uh, addressing the symptoms, one has to address the cause. Correct. So uh, just to give you an example, you know let's say the person is getting headache on a regular basis. What does the person do? He go to a medical shop, get me a tablet, painkiller. If he he or she is, if they are getting it on a regular basis. Uh, taking painkiller tablet is that the solution? No, sir. no, no, right? So you know you need to consult a doctor and try to find out what exactly may be the reason for the headache, right? So I just took an example uh, so that we could uh, understand. Uh, the 38 percent of the uh, uh, times it, 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 the reason mentioned is in uh, inappropriate design of the repair work. So the, uh, the repair works have not been planned and designed properly. 15% of the uh, reason is attributed to the you know bad choice of the materials for the uh, repair. Obviously, 19% uh, is because of the poor workmanship. So the work has not been you know executed in a proper manner, and uh, rest 12% may be the other uh, factors. So uh, just to give you an example here, we have uh, discussed the uh, column uh, which is shown over here. Patch repair without arresting the corrosion can lead to repeated repairs. It's, it's, it's like I just gave you an example. If you do not uh, correct the cause, and if you treat the symptoms, the symptoms will be occurring on a regular basis and you may have to spend more amount for that. Okay. Now here if you see, uh, you know they have just extracted a core of uh, or roof element. So repeated repairs or overlays on the roof element. So thickness has increased drastically. So from 10 centimeter, it has gone to 30 centimeter. Without understanding what is the reason, they, have, they went on, you know, adding the overlay, right? So uh, again, here if you see, uh, you have a distressed uh, portion of a building. Uh, this is uh, before uh, the, uh, this is when the distress had occurred, and this portion is after the uh, repair work has been carried out. One thing we what, what we need to understand over here is patch repair without eliminating the moisture ingress. So slowly you will understand that you know one of the main uh, reason for the corrosion is you know the ingress of uh, uh, moisture. So without eliminating this reason, if you uh, carry out the patch repair, then you know the problem is going to occur. So yeah. So having understood this now, uh, uh, you know, I understand that uh, people are aware of the deterioration uh, mechanisms which occur in the uh, concrete material. But uh, you know, uh, you know there are ample number of uh, you know, reasons which can be attributed for the deterioration or distress, okay, or degradation. I can call in, in general, okay. So uh, concrete in 
general, if you see, uh, it uh, tends to undergo the distress, failure, deterioration, or degradation because of many reasons. Because of many reasons, it may it may be because of the uh, the metal which has been used. Okay, so the uh, design mix of uh, design mix, uh, there is some uh, fault in it. Okay, uh, we'll try to understand that at a later stage. Segregation. I, I, uh, I'm sure people do understand what is uh, segregation. So this can also lead to, you know, uh, I mean, degradation or deterioration. We try to understand. Uh, honeycombing is also one of the reasons which can be uh, attributed to the uh, one of the reasons for deterioration. So uh, yeah, one thing uh, is very which is very important over here is faulty uh, structure design. So if the uh, you know the structural design designer has committed some mistake or has underestimated during the design process, gone. It's, it's you know it is very difficult to rectify that. Okay. So ultimately, this can lead to structural failure or cracks and uh, the collapse. So obviously, you know, uh, although the structural design is good, but if you go wrong in the workmanship, if the work is not being executed properly, again, this can lead to problems. So faulty workmanship or poor construction practices can also lead to the deterioration. Yeah. So uh, abuse of uh, structures, abuse of structures in the sense, you know, overloading. So uh, in, uh, in the news, many times we may have heard that, you know, the portion of a bridge has, uh, you know, has deteriorated or is undergoing settlement, okay. So uh, overloading is one of the reasons, okay. Uh, wear and tear, okay. So wear and tear, that's it. Well, uh, so these are, these come under the physical uh, uh, reasons, chemical reasons, okay. Because of the chemical interaction also, the distress can occur inside the concrete. So, uh, carbonation, okay, uh, we will try to un understand in brief what is carbonation, uh, what is uh, fluoride induced uh, corrosion, uh, okay. So, uh, here what I have done is I have just uh, highlighted some of the uh, uh, points or some of the words which I will be uh, stressing upon. So, uh, if you see over here, uh, this is a portion of a uh, dam. Okay, which has undergone uh, distress. Okay, so this is because of the uh, operation. Okay, this is because of the operation. Somewhere I had mentioned erosion due to operation. This is an example of uh, erosion due to uh, operation, which is very common in the uh, dams. So this is uh, inside of a uh, inside view of a uh, sewer. So look at the uh, uh, inner surface of the uh, concrete pipe over here. What has happened? So you know. I can say that you know this distress because of the sulfate uh, uh, react, uh, re attack, okay, or sulfate reaction. Uh, same thing here also. If you see the portion of uh, the this structure, you know this portion is you know has undergone deterioration. So this is because of the uh, sulfate attack, okay. So yeah. So uh, this is what I was saying. Uh, here, if you uh, understand. Materials, okay. So, materials part. This is an example of a uh, crack which has occurred in the uh, slab. Why? The reason being, it's clearly mentioned over here, right? Although concrete is a material which is good in compression, uh, you know, but to some extent it has got some capacity to resist uh, tensile uh, load, okay. So, when the tensile strength uh, strains uh, exceed its uh, capacity. This can happen. So here is an example of a crack which has occurred in the uh, slab. So this is one of the uh, pick wherein uh, you know the concrete has uh, you know has undergone uh, deterioration. Look at uh, the way how the portion has uh, deteriorated. This is because of the uh, free spa uh, action. Okay. So this is uh, very predominant in uh, the structures which are built in uh, the cold. Uh, environment or cold uh, regions. So uh, I was just saying, uh, you know, bad uh, workmanship, okay. So, you know, or a poor supervision or bad workmanship can also lead to uh, problems over here. Here you can see that, uh, you know, uh, segregation is there. But, uh, you know, the uh, styling of the concrete over here, okay, right. So uh, some portion of the, uh, you know, this uh, structure is in honeycomb which are happened okay and here if you see uh, the reinforcement has got 
exposed. So this this is the soffit of the beam and this is your uh, reinforcement. We'll we'll slowly try to understand why this happens actually. So yeah, these are uh, very common swing gauge cracks which occur in the uh, slab. Once the concreting has been uh, carried out for the slab, you know uh, uh, the swing gauge uh, cracks uh, tend to uh, occur. Okay. So, uh, if proper curing, uh, if it can be ensured, then uh, the formation of uh, shrinkage cracks, intensity at which the shrinkage cracks will form, can be greatly reduced. Please understand that uh, uh, you know uh, shrinkage cannot be controlled uh, completely. Why? Because uh, you know as the uh, the hydration process uh, uh, starts, the water gets uh, starts getting converted. Correct. So obviously there will be some change in the volume because of which shrinkage can happen. So you have to ensure that uh, you know curing process has to be uh, continuous. So these are some of the cracks which are generally seen in the slab again plastic shrinkage cracks which generally occur when the concrete is in the uh, fresh state. So uh, uh, that's what I say that you know curing has to be continuous and uh, proper. Now uh, here is a view of uh, uh, you know one of the portion of the look at the uh, reinforcement. How can the concrete enter in between the gap? Tell me. It's, uh, unless you know there's very less gap <coughs> in the uh, reinforcement body. Okay, right? So uh, you know we have to be very very uh, careful uh, uh, in these uh, situations. Okay, right? So congestion of reinforcement, dense reinforcement, you know can lead to problems, okay? It can lead to uh, segregation, it can lead to honeycombing, <coughs> finishing will get uh, affected, okay? So, you know, as a structural engineer, you know, uh, it, it's responsibility of uh, designer, you know, to ensure that these things doesn't uh, happen, okay? So, uh, the as structural engineer, he or she has to also understand the practical difficulties which occur in uh, the uh, site. So, uh, yeah. Uh, cracks or deterioration uh, can also occur uh, because of uh, the uh, you know uh, uh, bad construction or poor construction uh, practices. As you all know that uh, you know uh, in case of a cantilever, what happens? The uh, tension is at the top. Okay. So uh, because of the negative bending moment or hogging bending moment. Okay. So placing of the uh, reinforcement uh, is very very uh, crucial. Okay, improper location of the negative bending moment can lead to crack, especially at these junctions. Okay, so we have to be very very uh, uh, careful with this. Now here, if you see, uh, not much uh, cover has been given to the uh, reinforcement. Not much cover. It had to be here, but it has got shifted because of some reasons. Now this is an open invitation for the reinforcement to undergo. No, probably uh, corrosion. Uh, if, if if this structure were to be in a, a coastal environment, <coughs> again over here, if you see uh, example of a congested uh, reinforcement, see how can the concrete get inside the, this gap if the reinforcement has been uh, if the details have been given in this manner or it has been executed in this way? It's very difficult. The concrete will get stuck in this place, and uh, probably the problem of honeycombing or segregation can. Uh, Generally happen. So yes, uh, today uh, you know people uh, don't have uh, time with them. Okay, uh, it's like you know they want to uh, finish off their work very quickly, right? See, please understand, concrete uh, you know when it is in uh, fresh state, it is you know it takes time to uh, you know strengthen. So till it gains the strength, you know the formwork has to be present in its place. Premature uh, uh, remo removal of the shuttling or form work can lead to a situation wherein the concrete is in fresh state, and uh, you know the moment you remove the shuttling, uh, it will deflect and this will fall down. Okay, so uh, many uh, places it has uh, happened wherein you know the shuttling was uh, removed uh, within a short period. You know we have to be very very careful uh, with that. Because that can lead to you know uh, catastrophe or collapse as well. Now I think I, I told you, uh, uh, you know, segregation. Uh, uh, everyone over here uh, do understand that what is segregation. Uh, so segregation is you know suppression of the ingredients which are present inside the 
concrete. Now there may be many uh, reasons which can be attributed for the segregation. Excessive uh, uh, vibration, okay? Over vibration can also lead to probably uh, segregation, right? So please understand what is the purpose of uh, compaction or uh, uh, consolidation? We need to remove the air voids which are present in it, right? Under compaction is also dangerous. Over, comp over compaction is more dangerous. Enter, right? So, you know, you have to, uh, as an engineer, you have to balance, okay? you have to give instructions to the, uh, you know, workers or the people who are involved in it, right? So, uh, incorrect handling of concrete, right? So, uh, placing the concrete from a, or pouring the concrete from a very large height can also lead to segregation, right? You have to take precautions over here, right? So, that's there. So, if you do not, uh, uh, you know, do not take care, then uh, probably this can lead to segregation and in turn, segregation and durability, they are directly linked, okay? Uh, so when the concrete undergoes segregation, its durability will come down, okay? So one of the, mo uh, one more uh, reason is uh, high slump uh, mixes. So, you know, uh, contractor or, you know, the masons, they have this habit of uh, uh, have adding uh, extra amount of uh, water to get the required workability or to get the required finish and all, right? They have to be very, very careful, right? Although they may get a higher workability, but uh, adding uh, you know excessive water can lead to problem of segregation. So we have to be very careful over here, okay? So, uh, you know, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, the pits are not of very high quality. So things are not been uh, seen over here clearly. So, yeah. Ah, uh, this is what I was saying. Honey cooling, right? Uh, honeycombing is a very, very common uh, phenomenon which uh, generally occurs at the uh, construction sites. I'm sure uh, you would have seen uh, such sort of uh, finishes uh, in uh, general, okay, right? So what are the, uh, there may be many reasons which can be attributed. Look here, how densely the uh, reinforcement has been uh, placed. Obviously, the, uh, the, the what happens is the mortar will get inside the uh, gap, the aggregates, force aggregates as a whole will stay back. So uh, that can also lead to a problem of, uh, you know, honeycombing. So I think I have shown it here. Look, look here. How bad is the finish over here? After the shutting has been removed, okay, uh, the mortar uh, layer is not at all present. The aggregate is, uh, you know, exposed here, very bad. Okay, yeah, uh, please understand that, uh, you know, honeycombing can also uh, happen because of the leakage, okay? So, gaps in between the shutterings have to be clearly packed. If the gaps between the shutterings are not clearly packed, what happens is uh, the slurry or the mortar will come out of the gaps, okay? So, uh, that can also lead to, uh, you know, honeycombing, okay? So, having understood this now, We'll uh, uh, quickly try to uh, understand uh, the corrosion, uh, which is uh, very common. Because, see, in India, uh, this is, uh, you know, very uh, commonly found uh, problem. Why? Because major, uh, you know, India has a very big uh, coastal uh, boundary, correct or not? So, take example of Mumbai, okay, it's on the western coast, Kolkata, eastern coast, okay, Gujarat, major part of Gujarat is in, uh, it has got a good amount of, uh, you know, coastal uh, coverage, uh, Karnataka, Goa, uh, on the western coast, Maharashtra, and on the eastern coast, if you see Tamil Nadu, you have got, you have got uh, Andhra Pradesh, Bengal, Orissa, right? So, if you see, uh, at least 50 to 60 percent of our states, you know, have got uh, coastal uh, boundaries. So, uh, structures which are uh, constructed in uh, these uh, conditions, mm -hmm. there, uh, corrosion is a very common uh, uh, phenomena which uh, occurs, okay? And uh, companies, uh, individuals, owners, clients uh, do spend hell lot of money, I'm telling you, hell lot of money to address this uh, issue. In fact, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mumbai is a very big uh, hub when it comes to uh, the companies uh, which give the solution for the corrosion, okay, right? So, yeah, so, ha. now we need to understand here uh, in this uh, graph that, you know, the corrosion rate, okay, on the y-axis you have corrosion rate and on the x-axis you have what? 
what? Th. Okay. See, please understand that the corrosion rate is high when the pH value is lower. Okay. As the pH value goes on increasing, okay, okay, what happens? The rate of corrosion goes on decreasing. In fact, if you see uh, beyond 10, the corrosion intensity comes down drastically. Okay. But uh, on the other other side, right? We, after it reaches, uh, uh, you know. Six or so, it uh, it shoots up. Okay, so what we need to understand over here is, you know, uh, the corrosion and pH levels inside the concrete are very closely interlinked. So uh, I'm sure uh, you people would have uh, come across this concept. Uh, concrete is a very high alkaline uh, material. I'm sure you will agree with this. So generally, if you see. The pH levels inside the concrete is in the range 12 to 13. So uh, the main reason behind this is because of the presence of what? Any idea? Can, can anybody guess what may be the reason why the pH levels inside the concrete is in the range 12 to 13? Which, which, which constituent is re responsible for it? Calcium, calcium hydroxide. The answer is your calcium hydroxide which is a byproduct of your uh, cement hydration uh, process. Okay, so uh, uh, in the presence of uh, calcium hydroxide, uh, you know, is responsible for maintaining high alkalinity. Okay, maintaining high alkalinity is good for corrosion or bad for corrosion? Good. Refer back to this table, uh, graph. Come back here now. I'll go back. I'll come back. Yeah. Maintaining high alkalinity is good or bad for corrosion? Good for? Okay, so very simple, I will answer. So when the pH levels are higher, the alkalinity is on the higher side. So the risk of corrosion will be lower. It is good for the structure if the pH levels are maintained in uh, uh, between 12 and uh, uh, 13. Okay, right? So slowly you will uh, understand that uh, uh, you know uh, the calcium hydroxide also you know, is a byproduct of the cement hydration process. It doesn't contribute to the strength gain, please understand. Okay, but it is the main uh, ingredient which is uh, basically responsible for ensuring high alkalinity, right? So high alkalinity is bad for corrosion, good for the structure, okay? So what happens is when the alkalinity is on a higher side, there is a layer of uh, passivity film uh, or layer, I'll say, right? It's, it's like, you know, you get a bodyguard sort of thing to the reinforcement or to be steel okay so what happens is uh, when uh, when you have a bodyguard uh, like calcium hydroxide so the risk of corrosion will be very very less however when uh, the passivity passivating film is disrupted or you know uh, when this uh, ps levels reduce uh, you know this bodyguard will go back okay so the corrosion start uh, the process of corrosion will start or will get initiated okay so i'm sure uh, i don't want to go much into detail of it uh, everybody understands over here that you know uh, corrosion as a whole is a uh, is it a chemical process yes yes it's a electrochemical <coughs> process some chemical changes also happen and in addition to that change of uh, you know uh, you know electrons which generally occur okay please understand over here you have uh, i'll not go much into detail of it moist concrete is an uh, probably an electrolyte electrolyte okay so the purpose of electrolyte is you know it acts as a catalyst moving uh, the uh, electrons from this end to this particular uh, end so from anode to uh, cathode okay so uh, I think I have uh, told this. I think I'll skip this. Yeah. So in general, uh, uh, what happens is if the quality of the concrete is good, corrosion rate will be slow. I think we have understood this. The corrosion gets accelerated. Please understand. It gets accelerated when the pH level goes down. Okay. In the presence of aggressive chemicals, the uh, the corrosion can get accelerated. Okay. So we will try to understand this. So what do you mean? Uh, so there are two parts which we need to understand over here. Corrosion inhibitors. What do you mean by corrosion inhibitors? The agencies which are responsible for you know bringing down the corrosion. One is the quality of the concrete. 
second is I think we have uh, understood this high pH. Which are the agencies which are responsible for the uh, corrosion to progress? Okay, one is oxygen. Oxygen is available easily to us. Water. Yes, it is easily available. Correct or not? Right. So um, majority of your uh, structures which are constructed in your uh, coastal environment, you know, they are in contact with the uh, moisture. Okay, right. So uh, you know, uh, stay electric currents. You have got uh, chemical uh, environment. Okay. So you know, uh, you know, industries which are manufacturing, uh, you know, chemicals. So the structures over there can be uh, subjected to. Uh, I mean, can lead to uh, corrosions. Okay. Uh, one thing which you need to understand over here is chloride. Okay. Chlorides are one of the major contributors which are responsible for the corrosion. So now, what does uh, corrosion basically uh, uh, can uh, uh, bring in? Okay. So as you see over here, uh, it can lead to cracking. It can lead to uh, uh, spalling. Okay. Right. So obviously, uh, once the cracking happens and the metal gets down, the reinforcement is now exposed. Okay. So oxygen, which is one of the main contributor, it is you know. Easily available, and any chemical if they want to get inside or get, uh, react with the steel, they can easily react. So please understand that uh, cover, okay? Quality of concrete and especially the quality of the concrete cover is very very uh, important, okay? So to ensure that uh, the corrosion process uh, slows down, okay? Now over here, if you can see here, uh, uh, here uh, the portion of the uh, steel bar. Has ready to see. Look, look at the diameter here. Look at the diameter here. So the uh, area of the, uh, the metal is uh, not present over here. Okay. In general, if you see in uh, RCC, uh, you know the load is carried together by concrete and steel. Okay. Now, when there is a loss of section, what's going to happen? You know. Uh, Obviously, uh, good amount of steel may not be available to take care of that particular loading. Okay, so again, this can lead to uh, problems such as uh, cracking, etc. Uh, one thing which you need to understand over here is, you know, the reactivity of uh, metals or alloys in uh, sea water. Please, uh, uh, you know, uh, you will appreciate why gold and platinum cost is on a higher side. Okay, why people prefer gold and platinum okay the reason is it More is inert yeah. it is basically chemically inert okay so if you see over here okay uh, there is steel okay uh, here okay there is uh, uh, okay iron or steel is over here right so look at the uh, uh, I mean reactivity of the zinc okay so what happens zinc uh, is a material which is more reactive when you, uh, in presence of sea water. Okay, you will shortly understand uh, how this uh, advantage is made use in uh, ensuring uh, the longevity of the uh, reinforcement bar. Okay, now I was just saying corrosion in uh, concrete. Okay, can occur because of two reasons. One is uh, carbonation. Okay, what is carbonation? Carbonation is a process. Where is the carbon dioxide? Okay, carbon dioxide I'm sure uh, is available abundantly. Okay, so especially in uh, urban regions, uh, you know, there is lot of uh, pollution. Okay, and in the industrial uh, uh, areas, so the carbon dioxide presence will be higher. Okay, so uh, what happens is this carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere, okay, reacts with the calcium hydroxide. Okay, reacts with the calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide, I have told, is a Byproduct in the uh, cement hydration process, which is responsible for the uh, maintaining the pH levels. So, the moment carbon dioxide interacts with calcium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide gets converted to calcium carbonate. 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 Calcium carbonate. Okay. Uh, one thing what we need to understand over here is, you know, there is one more theory which is also told. Okay. Carbon dioxide in presence of water leads to formation of Carbonic acid. This carbonic acid reacts with your calcium hydroxide, leading to the formation of calcium carbonate. So what happens? Uh, previously, calcium hydroxide was present. This calcium hydroxide now gets converted to 
calcium carbonate. So automatically when calcium hydroxide gets converted to calcium carbonate, the pH level goes down. The pH level goes down. Previous it was more than 12. So as the calcium hydroxide uh, you know, goes on getting uh, utilized, the pH level goes on reducing. So sometimes you know uh, it can go uh, somewhere in the range uh, 6, 7 also. Okay? Now as you know that uh, uh, you know uh, the products which are formed out of the corrosion okay, can also uh, lead to the increase in the volume. Okay? So increase in the volume. Because of this increase in volume, you know, the uh, concrete which is present in the, uh, uh, the uh, cover region tends to crack. And once it cracks, the uh, material which is present in the cover region will fall. Okay? So I think uh, this is uh, clearly been uh, explained over here. Okay? So, yeah. Now, uh, how do we uh, basically uh, reduce this uh, uh, problem? Okay? How do we reduce this problem? If somewhere to uh, uh, I mean, you know, answer uh, this, you know, so uh, this problem can be reduced by addressing this issue, porosity. Okay? Higher the porosity, permeability will be more. more. Permeability more, durability will be yes. dur durability will uh, come down. Correct or not? Okay. Secondly, the presence of moisture. The presence of moisture. Okay. So if these two things can be uh, controlled, okay, right? Then uh, the uh, problem of carburation can be, uh, you know. Uh, corrected to a greater extent. Okay. Uh, now this is what I was uh, saying. In fact, how uh, pH can uh, probably uh, you know uh, lead to uh, or can control the chloride uh, reduced corrosion. Okay. In addition to carbon dioxide, chloride is also one of the main uh, you know ingredient which is responsible for the uh, the corrosion process. Okay. So, uh, you know, I think have, it has been mentioned here, the concentration of the chlorides, okay, is greatly affected by the concrete's pH, right? So, uh, it was demonstrated that the threshold level of 8000 ppm of chloride ions was required to initiate corrosion when pH was 13.2, okay? When the pH level was 13.2, okay, so uh, for the uh, corrosion process to initiate, okay, 8000 ppm of chloride ions was required, right? As the pH was lowered to 11.6, okay, from 13.2 to 11.6, uh, for the corrosion process to initiate, only 71 ppm is required, okay. So what I mean to say over here is, you know, maintaining pH has double benefits. One thing is that, you know, carbonation can also be controlled and the chloride reduced corrosion can also be controlled okay so uh, i'm sure uh, in the cold uh, regions such as kashmir or in the western countries or russian subcontinent if you see okay right uh, or canada for example or major part of uh, usa right de-icing sites are very commonly uh, used to, to clear the, uh, the you know ice which has got deposited in the on the uh, roads okay right so uh, one of the main ingredient in the de-icing sites is Chlorides is chlorides. Okay, so we have to be very very uh, careful uh, while using the uh, de-icing yes. salts. Okay, it's, it's like you know you are giving an open invitation. Okay, uh, for the chloride to get inside the concrete uh, surface. So this was just one of the example uh, which I think I should uh, I thought I should include. So Mandalay Bridge. Okay, this was one of the bridge which was uh, present in uh, uh, you know uh, goa okay so it was constructed in the year 1972 fine and in the year 1986 uh, this bridge uh, underwent uh, collapse so you know i have just included one of the uh, newspaper cutting right so two buses had miraculous escape mandal bridge collapse okay eight feared killed okay so, uh, you know, I'm sorry, uh, the images are not that much clear, okay. So, uh, when they went on to find out the uh, exact uh, reason, okay, why uh, this bridge uh, underwent failure, okay, initially they thought that, uh, you know, the contractor had committed mistake, later they, uh, uh, you know, uh, moved on uh, their uh, I mean, uh, direction towards, you know, faulty structural design, okay. but problem lies in the usage of calcium chloride okay 
catch up for it. I'm sure in your uh, concrete technology, you would have uh, probably uh, studied uh, accelerator, right? So at that time, they had used uh, calcium chloride as an accelerator in concrete. Okay? Now that led to the, uh, I mean, failure, or uh, that led to the corrosion of the uh, reinforcement bar, which was uh, used in the uh, girders. Okay? And, uh, you know, the failure did not occur, occur uh, all of a sudden. Over a period of time, uh, the process has continued, and after a span of 16 years, uh, you know, the structure, you know, came down. So today, if you see, majority of your, uh, I mean, uh, uh, admixtures, they mention that they are chloride free. Okay. Uh, the main reason is that you know the chloride which is present in the uh, ingredient can probably lead to uh, corrosion. Okay. Now I'm sure. Uh, now how do we address this uh, issue of uh, corrosion? Okay. So I'm sure in your, uh, uh, I mean, if you observe uh, the. Uh, uh, I mean the, uh, I mean the structures which are built in the marine or the alkaline uh, marine environment or the coastal environment, they generally coat uh, the reinforcement bar with the uh, epoxy. Okay, that is a very uh, common uh, practice uh, which is done uh, to ensure that uh, the reinforcement uh, does not uh, undergo uh, corrosion. Okay, so I think I have shown it here. Yeah, uh, now this is what I was saying, uh, zinc, okay? So galvanized uh, uh, reinforcement, they also give a port of, uh, uh, you know, zinc to the uh, reinforcement bar. So what happens? The reinforcement will not undergo corrosion. In turn, the zinc, you know, will probably uh, bear the brand, okay? So obviously, uh, some metallurgical uh, changes can also be brought in. Okay, adding chromium and copper, etc., in you know some percentages can also probably control the uh, or improve the corrosion uh, resistance. And uh, I'm sure uh, slowly uh, things are uh, changing now. So FRP uh, bars uh, down the line in the coming years, uh, FRP bars uh, will surely, uh, I mean. Uh, replace the steel. So uh, you have GFRP glass fiber reinforced polymer bars, carbon fiber reinforced polymer bars, arabic fiber. Okay. So you know uh, slowly they are uh, taking over the steel. Okay. The advantage is uh, they have got higher uh, tensile strength than steel, and obviously they <coughs> don't uh, undergo corrosion. But the problem over here is fire resistance. Okay. Even steel doesn't have good fire resistance. Correct. Same is with uh, probably uh, the uh, FRP bars, probably a coat of uh, fireproof coating uh, uh, or paint can uh, control this issue. So yeah, um, corrosion inhibitor as an active ingredient can also be used. So you know, calcium nitrate is added in the uh, concrete. So what happens is this will reduce uh, the uh, you know the rate at which the corrosion will uh, uh, progress. This is very good uh, wherever the, the chlorides are uh, you know uh, present in uh, uh, large uh, quantities. Okay. So uh, I'm sure uh, you have a lot of uh, coatings which have come in the market. Okay. So on the outer surface you can uh, give a coating so that. Uh, the uh, ingress of the chloride ions doesn't happen, uh, you know, uh, in a quick manner. Okay, uh, just to uh, summarize. Okay, right here I have just included, uh, uh, you know, realkylization and desalination. Now I was just saying, you know, uh, carbonation. Okay, what, what does carbonation do? Carbonation do basically it reduces the pH. Okay, so why not we introduce a component inside the concrete? Which uh, can alter the pH levels in uh, concrete. So uh, you know uh, uh, some chemicals which are added inside the concrete, such as sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate. Okay, through uh, a dedicated process, we can increase the pH levels inside the concrete. Okay, so what happens is uh, you know the uh, pH levels will increase uh, drastically where with the introduction of uh, these. Uh, you know ingredients in a systematic way. I don't want to go much into detail of it. The process is called as realkylization. Here is a process of desalination. It is a process where you know we try to extract the chloride ions which are uh, 
present in it. Okay, right? So uh, again, it's a uh, electrochemical process uh, because of time constraints. I don't want to touch upon those. Now, uh, uh, cathodic protection and uh, sacrificial anode are very commonly employed uh, solutions okay, for uh, the bridges which are constructed in the marine or coastal uh, environment. So I think uh, uh, because of time constraint, I have not included that. Okay. So uh, yeah, what is the time? 110. Okay, fine. So I'll I'll try to uh, go at a faster pace. Maybe I think 15, 20 minutes should be good enough, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So going to the part two, now we'll uh, quickly try to understand the condition evaluation and the entities and semi-destructive tests. Okay. So basically, what is condition uh, evaluation and what is the need for it? So uh, by definition, if you see, uh, we are trying to examine the concrete. So basically to identify what, why the distress is occurring, okay? That's nothing but your condition evaluation, okay? Right? It, it's similar to, uh, you know, the profession of a doctor, okay? So whenever a, a patient uh, uh, visits a doctor, they generally, uh, uh, you know, first thing what they do is, you know, they straight away they not write, uh, you get done all these tests, correct? First, they will visually examine the patient, uh, interview them, what, what problem you have got, okay? So it's you know the process is very uh, similar to that. So now why this condition evaluation is uh, carried out is you know to identify the cause of distress, uh, why the uh, distress is occurring, and what is its uh, source. Because please understand prevention is uh, better than uh, cure. So source has to be identified. Without identifying the source, uh, you know. Uh, no matter whatever may be the whatever may be the repair work which you carry out, it may not be sufficient. To what extent uh, the distress has occurred? Okay, right. So in the event of an earthquake or in the event of a fire calamity, okay, or corrosion, uh, the structures tend to undergo distress. To what extent have they undergone distress or undergone uh, failure? That is that we need to ascertain. Okay. For example, let's say you know uh, if, uh, one way to uh, you know. Uh, ascertain the residual strength. Okay, right. So uh, at, at present, what uh, what is the strength of the existing uh, uh, column, or what is the strength of the existing beam? Okay, right. So or to find out the adequacy of the existing structure, because why these are important is you know uh, without uh, knowing the uh, actual strength uh, directly, if you go on. Uh, say for example, adding one extra floor. Okay, it can lead to you know. Uh, I mean, you are openly inviting a calamity or a disaster to happen. Okay, so uh, it's better uh, to you know ascertain what is the actual strength uh, the uh, structure has got. So you know, uh, as part of the maintenance plan or for the health monitoring, uh, you know, condition evaluation is basically uh, carried out. Uh, also, in India, it's not so uh, common. Okay. So you know, even buildings have got it's not only a life or uh, you know uh, the. Uh, machinery or your uh, vehicles, even the buildings have got insurance. Please understand. So you know, if, if the uh, if any owner wants to get insured their building, uh, you know, uh, especially the Western countries, you know, uh, the insurance companies ask for the structural audit or condition evaluation. Okay, right? That's very much important. If somebody were to uh, purchase the uh, building, whether the building is in a good condition or not, we need to uh, basically ascertain that. So take all these things into consideration, uh, the condition evaluation is uh, basically carried out. Now how the <coughs> condition evaluation is uh, carried out is, you know, you have four parts in it. You have preliminary inspection, you have uh, next process is your planning, third is your uh, visual inspection and followed by field and laboratory testing. So, uh, as part of the preliminary uh, investigations, you know, uh, they will try to collect uh, the uh, information or review the records, whatever it is. Then later, uh, you know, they will carry out uh, the detailed uh, visual inspection. Okay? So it's very similar to the, the doctor, uh, you know, uh, checking the uh, patient, okay? So, in the initial stages, right? So, once uh, they are not sure, then uh, probably they will go for detailed uh, investigation, right? So if the doctor is not, uh, you know, confident what exactly is the cause, then probably they'll say, you please get done the blood test or you get done the x-ray, whatever it is, correct? So same thing uh, applies here. 
after uh, the detailed investigation has been carried out, they will come out with the uh, conclusion. Okay. So because of shortage of time, I think I am not going in detail of this. So I think I have told this preliminary in inspe uh, inspection. So what is the period of construction, uh, construction details, exposure conditions, okay? Uh, if, there, if there were any changes which were carried out in the building, okay? If there was any deterioration which was, uh, which had occurred previously, you know, details of that will also be uh, taken up, okay? So if there has been any repair works which has been carried out previously, the details of that is also very much uh, important, okay? So, and uh, you know, photographical evidence of the distressed uh, structure can uh, probably be very helpful, right? So, previous distress if, if it had occurred, so if photographs are available, so this can probably, uh, you know, help the, uh, the uh, structural engineer to find out the exact uh, reason. So, yeah. So, uh, once this is done, uh, they will probably uh, collect the uh, uh, you know, uh, details, so they will uh, do the grouping of the uh, basically the uh, structural uh, members to uh, ascertain the uh, distress, yeah, so they will uh, try to ascertain, I mean group it into external columns, members which are uh, subjected to damping, okay, right, members with uh, different protective finishes, finishes yeah. So that's what, uh, you, know, uh, you know, based on damage, you know, they can classify it into five types, class 0, class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4. Class 0 is nothing but your uh, cosmetic repairs, class 4 is nothing but your uh, uh, major uh, repairs. So because of time constraint, I am not going in detail over here. So again, uh, when we go for visual inspection, uh, you know, so we will try to observe First is observations are very much uh, important. If, if there is any uh, areas where the water is getting stagnant or where, right, that needs to be, uh, you know, asserted because this is very common in the uh, uh, roof part, okay, right. So the exposed uh, RCC elements, this is uh, the terrace, okay. So uh, the uh, paint areas, right. So they try to uh, uh, collect the uh, details and uh, yeah, one thing what we need to understand over here, this is very much important. Person who is going for structural audit, okay, should have, you know, sound uh, familiarity or should have good knowledge of structural system. In a sense, you know, the distress in a building or in a structure can happen because of the uh, design problem, because of the supervision, or the, right? So, he should have a sound knowledge of uh, structure, he should also have sound knowledge of the materials also, right? So, because uh, as we have understood that some of the distress which occur in the uh, structures are uh, because of the uh, poor uh, uh, quality of the materials, okay? That's there. Okay. Uh, finally, you know, once they carry out the uh, visual inspection, uh, they'll uh, try to, uh, you know, make a summary of which are the areas uh, which have gone undergone the distress which are the areas where deflections are uh, maximum, okay? So all these things, they'll try to uh, uh, collect the uh, details and they'll try to uh, prioritize, okay? Which are the areas which needs urgent uh, uh, repair work which needs to be uh, carried out, okay? So prioritization is very much important. So I think uh, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, the mechanical properties, ascertaining, ascertaining mechanical properties, so you have uh, non-destructive uh, testing, okay? So I think uh, 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 for compress systems, uh, you know, uh, the rebound hammer and UPV are very commonly uh, employed, right? So again, I think I'll skip this because of time constraint. So uh, if somewhere to, if one way to ascertain, uh, you know, the uh, uh, electrochemical activity. See, corrosion, as I have said, you know, is a electrochemical uh, process. So, uh, how the corrosion is progressing inside the uh, concrete, you know, you can check that using a uh, half cell uh, potential uh, method. So, uh, I think in the coming slides, I'll try to summarize, I'll show that, okay. Phenophthalate, I'm sure people will remember that this is a very common indicator which you use in the chemistry lab, right? So, we in fact use that to find out or the extent of carbonation the concrete has uh, undergone. So, you know, because of time constraint, you know, I have not uh, touched alkali aggregate reactions. So, there is something called as petrographic analysis, you know, which is basically carried out. So, uh, basically the geologists uh, are 
more, uh, I mean, professional to carry out these things, right? Okay, uh, yeah, uh, coming to the uh, uh, rebound hammer, so the code of uh, practice is uh, IS 13311 uh, part 2. So, IS 13311 part 1 is related to UPC, part 2 is related to uh, rebound uh, hammer. So, typical rebound hammer uh, looks uh, somewhat like this, right? So, uh, okay, so basically what we are trying to uh, do over here is uh, try to find out what is the amount of uh, rebound uh, which uh, uh, you know the plunger has uh, penetrated so that's what we basically do over here so uh, you know uh, if you look through the is 13311 uh, it gives you right so greater than 40 very good 30 to 40 good layer 20 to 30 fair okay so using this uh, rebound hammer you can ascertain the quality of the concrete right so higher the rebound it means that uh, you know better is the quality of the uh, concrete okay right so that is very much uh, important so uh, again ultrasonic pulse velocity uh, you know uh, this is how your typical pulse velocity equipment upv looks so it has a pulse generator you have a uh, receiver and you have a transmitter so uh, a pulse you know uh, pulse is basically uh, generated and what is the time which has which uh, the pulse has taken to travel from this edge to this edge is basically noted down over here okay so uh, you know uh, if one were to ascertain uh, that we can do that in uh, three ways uh, so one is direct semi direct and indirect so this is an example of uh, direct so if one were to ascertain the strength i mean the quality of the column okay so here you have uh, transmitter and you have here you have the receiver this person is holding the uh, equipment okay so here uh, this is an example of a uh, indirect uh, uh, transmission so yeah so this is example of a uh, again uh, semi direct over here yeah so one thing what we need to understand over here is you know presence of the reinforcement shield can alter the results so it is very important for us to ensure that we make use of uh, the rebar locator uh, also uh, when we are uh, ascertaining the pulse velocity okay so yeah so again is 13311 gives you this so uh, the above 4.5 uh, the concrete uh, quality is excellent <coughs> 3.5 to 4.5 good 3 to 3.5 medium below 3 it is Doubtful. It is very simple. If the uh, concrete has got uh, uh, voids in it, okay, or if the quality is poor, okay, uh, the uh, sound waves will take quite a, uh, you know, the time taken by the, uh, you know, the pulse will be more, okay. So if the uh, the concrete quality is uh, dense, force will be less. If force is less, it is dense. The uh, waves, okay, which are generated will travel at a faster pace. So obviously, you get a uh, velocity on a higher side. So higher the uh, pulse velocity, uh, you know, it is uh, very good for us uh, in terms of the uh, quality. Okay. So uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah, rebar locator. So this is uh, as I have said, uh, when you are using ultrasonic pulse velocity, you uh, use it in tandem with uh, the UPV and uh, pore cutter. Okay. So with the rebar locator, we can locate what is the diameter of the bar and how is the orientation. In addition to that. We can also probably uh, estimate what is the depth which is present in the uh, cover region. Uh, that can also be done. Yeah, uh, this is what I was uh, uh, saying. Uh, the phenolphthalein. Okay. So uh, look over here. Uh, what has happened is uh, they have used the uh, you know core drilling equipment to remove the portion of the uh, concrete, and uh, they have uh, subjected it to the Phenolphthalein. Okay, so very simple. Uh, the non-carbonated uh, surface, okay, will have pH in higher region. Okay, so the moment you sprinkle uh, phenolphthalein on the surface, it turns pink. Okay, so uh, so here if you see this region, uh, it, it, it remains uh, color, colorless. It means that you know this region, the pH value is less, and the uh, risk of corrosion is more. So yeah, I think uh, uh, how much time I'm left with? 
Okay, I think uh, you know because of shortage of time, I think I will uh, stop at this point. Uh, I understand that uh, you people have been uh, uh, you know seated from morning, and there is one event which is happening, so we will not disturb that. But uh, uh, thank you, thank you for your uh, time. Any questions? Sir, while uh, reinforcement, I have seen in one slide, uh, say, uh, congestion yeah. of uh, reinforcement all. In that case, uh, generally, yeah. you use ACC and other... Uh, yeah, uh, that's what. Uh, see, uh, whenever you have got congested uh, reinforcement, uh, the one of the best solution is to make use of the self-compacting concrete or uh, self-consolidating uh, concrete. Yes, that, is, that is one of the uh, good ways of... Uh, uh, yes, concrete, uh, we generally use... Uh, whatever chemicals uh, yeah. and all the things. Uh, so, whether uh, those things will affect the reinforcement uh, in a uh, longer period or uh, what is the thing? Because uh, it's, it's the thing is we are uh, using more number of, uh, because to make a workable concrete. So that's what, uh, if you want to make SCC workable, uh, you know, two types of admixtures you use. One is your uh, uh, water reducers, okay, or super plastic that's what we call it as. Second is your uh, viscosity modifying agents, which are popularly called as uh, BMA. So you know we, we have to use both the additions in uh, you know uh, adequate quantity. That what mix design has to be carried out, and uh, they need to find out what should be the dosage of BMA and uh, uh, the water reducers. Uh, accordingly, uh, I mean, you know we can get the uh, required slump, but you know uh, that should not affect the. Yeah. Okay. And also, uh, the main thing is uh, uh, generally we, when we are coating in marine uh, epoxy and all the things, uh, how it will affect the bond? Uh, uh, I think I, uh, you know, I, I had overlooked it. So one thing what we need to understand over here is, uh, you know, the presence of uh, epoxy will reduce the impact of corrosion, but uh, it comes at uh, risk. Okay. So the bonding between the concrete and the steel will not be uh, that good, okay. So uh, as a designer, they have to take into account when they are designing whatever that loss which is occurring because of the, uh, I mean, you know, reduction in bond that has to be uh, taken care in the design and accordingly, uh, you know, carried out. Okay. Yeah, that's there. And uh, they can also, uh, uh, I mean, uh, probably use some uh, ingredients which can uh, improve the uh, bonding. So maybe using bonding agents uh, can uh, probably uh, help in uh, reducing that impact. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Audience? I think 50% of the anti-scores are covered. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you, sir. Is there any other questions? So, yeah, if there are any questions, I think uh, you know, can I Yes, Balaji. Yes. As far as possible, I try to uh, answer your question. Yeah. Sir, yeah. what is concrete structure rehabilitation and what sparked your interest in concrete structure rehabilitation to lead a, a doctor level? See, uh, basically my PhD work is not in the field of uh, the rehab station. My work is, my PhD work is in the field of uh, earthquake resistant masonry. But you know, uh, 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 as part of my PG course, uh, I, I think Professor ha Suresh sir has uh, uh, said it. So we had a subject, uh, rehabilitation of uh, structures, which is popularly called as uh, remedial uh, uh, engineering, right? So uh, you know, the job of a remedial engineer is very similar to uh, the job of a doctor, okay? So in fact, uh, the remedial engineers are also called as building doctors. So, uh, you know, uh, from my M.Tech level, I, I always have, uh, you know, affection towards this uh, subject because, you know, this subject uh, uh, requires uh, the understanding of your concrete technology, building construction, RCC, heat, chemistry, physics, and, uh, yeah, many things are there. So, uh, it's a psychology, it's, it's a, uh, you know, blend of many uh, subjects. So knowledge of all uh, subjects is very much uh, uh, required. So yeah, uh, 
I always enjoy, you know, uh, taking the, uh, I mean, topics or uh, speak, uh, speaking on topics related to this subject. Yeah. Sir, in your opinion, what are the key feature direction for uh, reachers in this field, sir? Uh, I did not understand your question. Can you? Know? Yeah. Future direction, sir. Okay. If somebody were to. Uh, yes. Okay. So that's what. Uh, uh, probably, if somebody were to uh, start their career in this field, you mean to say? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I think uh, you know it's better if you uh, start your career with a company which are uh, generally uh, you know, associated with uh, retrofitting and uh, rehabilitation. Okay. So there are many companies. Bureau Veritas, I think, is a very popular company. First rock. Tika. These are some of the companies which basically deal with uh, you know this field. So uh, I'm sure uh, future is uh, very good, uh, especially because uh, this uh, this uh, field is not conventional field. I can say this is completely different from your conventional uh, building construction. So uh, over it and gaining mastery for this uh, field will take time because you need there are a lot of things which are. Uh, involved in it. So as you have seen, uh, the distress in uh, structures can happen because of many things. So uh, you know, as time progresses, experience will make you a, a better uh, person. So involving in projects uh, related to retrofitting rehabilitation uh, can give you that uh, probably the confidence. Yeah.